Hello guys, uh, today we're gonna do a video on disassembly of an Alienware uh, laptop. It's an Alienware uh, 17 R4 and uh, the reason why uh, we're gonna open this computer up is because uh, like many other Alienwares uh, they're overheating. So you might uh, you might want to actually clean it up, clean up the insides if it's uh, something as small as uh, just dusting off the fans, dusting off the inside of the computer, or uh, getting somewhere a little bit more uh, difficult to replacing the uh, thermal pads and thermal paste uh, from the CPU and uh, the graphic card. Uh, this video will help you. Now, before you decide to uh, to open up your uh, your computer. I would say uh, exhaust all the other options, uh, which might be uh, might be of help. So um, I would say um, back up your uh, back up your stuff and try to do a clean install of the Windows. Um, when you do a clean install, uh, choose the one to completely wipe the drive and uh, then reinstall it as that will keep absolutely nothing which was installed before and uh, you will do a clean install. Um, if you don't know how to do that, uh, there are a bunch of tutorials online which uh, they show you how to easily uh, do that without the, the help of a computer repair center. And uh, after you do that, um, uh, make sure you install all the drivers, uh, preferably manually uh, from the Dell website uh, and then uh, upgrade the NVIDIA drivers from the NVIDIA website. Try not to rely too much on the Windows 10 uh, self-drive uh, installs, uh, which sometimes uh, they're installing generic drives rather rather than uh, the original ones. And uh, then run um, run a stress test on the machine and see how well it uh, behaves. Uh, see if the temperatures uh, went down a little bit, even a couple degrees Celsius might make a lot of a difference. Um, so uh, this particular one has a problem where the CPU uh, it's greatly overheating. Uh, it has an i7 uh, CPU, I think it's the 7th or the 8th, uh, I believe it's the 7th uh, series. Uh, the CPU reaches temperatures of around 88 to 92 degrees on uh, core 0 and core 1 and uh, that's a little bit uh, you know, worries me because it's too much, uh, it's too high of a temperature uh, for the, you know, it, it, the, the, the CPU might die. So I already uh, reinstalled the windows, that did not help, uh, all the drivers are manually installed, that did not help. And I also want to mention something, if uh, don't run a monitoring tool uh, all the time, you don't need something running in the background and consuming uh, precious resources uh, just to tell you what the temperature is. If you feel the computer it's a little bit more sluggish than it than usually uh, than it's supposed to be because this is not a sluggish computer by any means and you feel the computer actually is getting hot then you can run uh, the temperature uh, tool to tell you what um, you know how hot uh, certain components are don't run it always uh, in the background uh, believe me especially if you're gaming uh, you need to have and you want to achieve that high FPS, you need as, uh, as little programs running in the background as possible. And the program which is uh, constantly monitoring the temperature of the computer, the, the RAM usage, the CPU usage and everything, uh, it's, gonna, it's gonna slow you down. So, yeah, uh, with that said, uh, here we go, this is the computer. Let me just uh, show this uh, monster to you. Which it is a monster, it's, it's a huge computer. Um, well, it is a desktop uh, replacement, basically. Uh, this is it, and I'm gonna show you how to get inside the computer and how to clean it up. So, you wanna see the computer uh, on your bench with the screen facing down. And, okay, let's see here, let's get the right angle with the camera. Yeah, that's about it. Okay. You need a Phillips screwdriver and you're gonna remove one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws from the back of the computer. Okay. okay. 
Now, uh, keep in mind that if the computer it's shutting, it's actually shutting off because of uh, heat problems. Uh, doing this process, which I'm uh, gonna go through with you guys, uh, won't really help. Uh, changing the thermal pads and paste might bring down the temperature by a couple of centigrade. Uh, don't expect miracles. However, every single uh, every single degree matter. So, in other words, degrees matter. Okay, just to be. Uh, current with all the movement for everything and anything matters I'm not saying it doesn't uh, so there we go uh, after you remove the after you remove the screws uh, use a pry tool like so and just pop up the back it's pretty easy don't be scared put some put some muscle in it and you lift the top case the bottom case I'm so sorry now that will have exposed the inside of your computer and you see these two fans uh, and then you have the heat sink right there now to, if you just want to clean up the fence uh, the fence yeah just take uh, take a little brush uh, loosen loosen the dust Okay, on the blades, and then you can take a little bit of, uh, I mean, you can take a can of air spray and just blow it away. Uh, I'm gonna use uh, an electric one, uh, since it's a little bit more cost efficient for me. Probably it's not gonna be for you, but uh, in a shop environment, it is much better. So we're gonna blow the dust out. Okay, wrong cable. So. Excuse uh, the technical difficulties. Let me just plug this guy in. Okay. So. Obviously, this computer was pretty well kept. There, uh, there wasn't a lot of dust, if any, actually. Uh, so the problem is not is not the accumulation of dust, but rather uh, let's see if it's gonna be the thermal paste. If that's gonna make any difference. So we have to fully disassemble this monster. All the screws, all the location of the screws are going to be. Uh, you, you can clearly see it right here. So. I'm just gonna go ahead and remove every single visible screw except the ones which uh, they say SSD2, SSD1. There's no need uh, to remove those. Uh, remove the SSD3 or whatever, how many SSDs you might have, you might want to remove them. Because when we're gonna lift the top case, uh, they cannot be there. Remove also the four screws which are right here at the regular hard drive, if you have a regular hard drive. And I'm gonna pause the video right now because you don't want to see me uh, just removing screws. It's pretty boring. I'll uh, open the screws and then I'll uh, take it from there. Okay, with uh, most of the sc visible screws uh, removed, uh, I wanna show you a uh, couple of screws which are hidden. So, uh, after you removed everything which is labeled, all of them are labeled M2.5 uh, XL8 or um, XL6, I believe so. Um, once you remove those and you remove the four screws which is holding the, um, uh, the hard drive together, I would highly recommend you to remove the regular hard drive because we'll have to turn the computer upside down and this will fail, will fall down. So we're gonna lift. Uh, the bracket and the hard drive out of its place and you see that you cannot just remove the connector because it has this little tab metallic tab which holds it in place so uh, rather than open these four screws I uh, much rather just basically remove the cable and uh, removing the cable is fairly easy see we'll pull it out from here and then we're just gonna lift it off the main board you see you have this is the connector and you just yank it right up you see so the hard drive is removed now we can safely turn the computer a little bit upside down i want to show you that on the on the back plate there are 
there are going to be two screws, one here and one there. Remove those two screws, and once you have the screws removed, we're going to put a computer again on its uh, on its back, and we're going to push. We're going to take a uh, pry tool, and right here, do you see? There is a little like a seam. Just insert it there and lift it up a little bit just to uh, lose the connections and then you do it from here just like so and now we're just going to push to push on uh, on this particular piece and this will come right off it is a shield which is uh, protecting the actual you see right here um, the, the heat sink. Now you see that under that you have three more screws. One, two, three. Uh, we're gonna remove. Uh, we're gonna remove those uh, those screws as well. Okay, one, two, three. Now the whole back case feels feels loose like it's ready to come off now before we remove this we have to remove every single cable which is on the back of this machine because you don't want to rip the cables off when you're gonna uh, lift the back case so we're gonna start uh, let's say we start on the left hand side uh, with uh, this this connection oh, sure. let me see my find my screwdriver Come on, screwdriver, where are you? Okay. Right under this, pla uh, this little uh, uh, plastic, you have the Wi-Fi card, which has one screw right there. We're gonna get rid of the screw, and you leave, you lift this little uh, card just like so, and you will push the clear plastic. You'll push it upwards slowly. Don't uh, don't force it because if you force it, you're gonna break these real cables, which are the, the Wi-Fi antennas. You don't want that because that's a pain to uh, reassemble it. Now uh, we're gonna remove the antennas, as I mentioned in different videos. Do not pull on the cable directly because you will break it, but rather on the connector itself. One there and one there, and. So uh, lift it from the metallic part and then we can just pull this little uh, antenna right out. Let me just close the door. Okay. Now you see there is another another connector right here. This is actually the connector for for the left light. So we're gonna pull it up, okay. Take it off uh, from here, let's see. Okay. And then we move to the part where the SSD was sitting and you'll see the ribbon cable which is labeled KB, which is obviously your uh, keyboard connector. In order to remove that, we're gonna lift on the sides of the connector slowly don't pull on it it will break you want to slowly lift up little by little okay use a tweezers you can't really use your nails because it's pretty tight right there and then you're just gonna lift the ribbon cable we're gonna do the same with the keyboard uh, backlight so This one gives me a little bit more trouble. Okay. And it's safe to remove. Then we have the mouse. There we go. That one is removed as well. Now we're gonna move to the battery. Okay. Now in this model they figure out to hide the battery somewhere where you have to remove all these screws in order to restore the battery so you know following Apple are you okay uh, we're gonna pull the battery right out okay it is out 
and we're gonna disconnect this cable and then you have the speakers you'll pull it you'll pull on it actually here I'm gonna push on it just like this and this came right off now we're gonna disconnect under the right fan we have the other uh, light we're gonna pull it right out just like this I'm gonna take it off here okay and this is glued here and I'll show you how to uh, remove the rest here is the it's also the DC in connector this one you push just like this slowly okay and that is out now the light in both sides you're gonna have two screws remove this one because that's your connector to the it's an LED I'll show you right now see that's right here it's a connector to the LED which is gonna illuminate you see right here this is going to illuminate the, the side panel so yeah just one of those Alienware uh, thingies so you're gonna do the same on the left hand side on that corner we're gonna remove that one as well and that's it it is out let's now lose the screw And now the back is ready to be lifted. So okay. So you see it is a little bit loose here, so we're gonna lift it up just like this working the edges you can put your fingers underneath if you need a little help you can always uh, use a pry tool and loosen the connections underneath it is absolutely normal I mentioned this in every single video the the cracking it's absolutely normal that means that uh, the plastic it's is releasing the clips the plastic clips are getting released rather okay and we go now on the front and that's basically slowly, slowly lift it, move it on a side because you might have something connected there and that are the, you know, you don't want to rip anything apart. There's nothing else but it's worth double checking, okay? This will expose the insides of your Alienware. Okay, so you have the battery right here, in case you want to change the battery, uh, you will follow the exact procedure I, uh, I showed you till now. And then you're going to have another one, two, three, and four. Four screws. You're going to lift the battery right up. The battery comes with this uh, connector. You replace it, and that's that. Now, if you want to know the model number of your battery, uh, it is the type it's 9N as in Nancy, J as in John, M as in Mary, number one. That's the type of the battery. Yeah, I'm gonna zoom on it. Let's see if, if you're gonna be able to... Okay, so that's your battery type, okay? Okay, so now, uh, what we're gonna do today, we're gonna remove this heat sink, remove the fans, clean them up properly, and then reapply the thermal paste and the thermal pads if needed. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how to do it. It's uh, fairly simple. You're gonna have all the screws locations is gonna be, uh, they have a number next to it. So you start typically, you can start from anywhere. It doesn't really matter how you disassemble it. Uh, it matters a little bit when you reassemble it. So um, I'm going to typically start from left to right. So I'm going to start with the screw number seven, which is on top of the graphic card. They're very small, so make sure you put them separate from other screws. You don't want to mix them. You don't want to uh, misplace them. One, two. Okay. 
three, and four. And now we can move to the CPU. So you have one screw right there on the top. Make sure um, you can mix the screws together, they're all the same. Make sure you put your screwdriver all the way in, don't put too much pressure, but you don't want the screwdriver to just slip and knock any of these little components of the main board because you're gonna be in deep, in deep trouble, okay? So your motherboard will stop working and then you're looking at a couple hundred dollars worth of repairs, okay? So, okay, so all the screws have been uh, released and now we're just gonna remove the fence as well so we have one screw on the side right here I'm not sure you can see it but it's a, it's a silver one you cannot miss it one there and one by the cable the Wi-Fi cables one two now the fan is moving along with the heatsink and we move on the right hand side where you have one screw right there and one screw right here. Okay. Now you have to loosen up the whole heat sink. So you're just gonna move and move this and then slowly lift it up. Okay, there you go. Now uh, another thing which Alien where guys figure out was to actually put the cables of the of the fan under the motherboard. Okay. So you'll see that you cannot really remove the whole heat sink because you have the cables holding right there now. What you're gonna do? You wanna remove all the whole motherboard, disconnect a couple more cables, and go through the trouble of it if it's not really necessary. Well, you actually you don't have to do that. Uh, if you pay close attention to the fence, you're gonna notice there are two more tiny screws, two black screws, one and one. So go ahead and remove those. One there and one there. And we will do exactly the same onto the right fan. Have one screw right there and one screw right here. Okay. Now what they did, you see the top of the um, of the fan, it is actually part of the heat sink. So that released the actual fan assembly, leaving it, you see, you'll have to loosen it up a little bit here. It will drop, it will drop the actual fan, it will leave it onto the, um, into the actual machine. So, let's see, one there, and then one there. And let's do a little bit on the right side, okay. It gives you a little bit more room to play but they didn't make that easy because underneath there's, there is a little bit of tape you see this this kind of tape which you have to remove in order for the fan to completely come off and now you kind of have a view a clear view at the inside of your computer now this is where you'd want to stop unless you want to remove the whole main board but again it's not necessary for, for, the, for this video as that will turn into a much more complicated procedure. Okay so we'll go with the, go with the brush, clean all the visible dust from inside of your fans as the right fan on the left hand side. Okay. And if you see it's very dirty, then you can just 
push onto the fence, drop it down and then just lift the whole assembly. Now, in this particular uh, case, uh, you'll see a little bit of accumulation of dust right there and a little bit like right here, you see, which this I can see it as being a problem. Okay, so I'm gonna take this in the back and blow it because I don't wanna I don't wanna do it in the shop as it's gonna lift quite a lot of uh, dust. I'll be right back. Okay, now as you see on top of the CPU and on top of the GPU there is this thermal paste. Now you wanna loosen it up a little bit with the plastic. Don't use metal. Be very careful, especially on the on the graphic card, as you have those uh, little capacitors. Uh, you don't want to knock them off, so very easily move the plastic tool to loosen it up. We're gonna remove what we can with the fingers, and then the rest you can take a little bit of a. I mean, you can take a you can take a toothbrush and just go into circular motions, just like so on both the CPU and the graphic card. Then remove all the residue on the board. And then if you wanna uh, clean it up even better, you can take a little bit of a napkin with a little bit of uh, alcohol. And just go on top of the die of the graphic card and the CPU, just like this. So we make it nice and shiny. Okay. Good. Now we're gonna put this on aside for now. And we're gonna take the actual heat sink and we're gonna clean that one as well. Okay. We do the same thing. You can use a plastic tool to remove that and this. Okay, especially on the graphic card, it's a little bit hard. I mean, it is normal. Problem is when the when the thermal paste solidifies so much that it actually resembles uh, cement, and sometimes I have to use actual power tool in order to remove it from the from here, but it's not the case right now. Okay, and we're gonna clean the remaining residue with a little bit of alcohol. Okay, now it's pretty straightforward uh, in removing the, the thermal paste. Now, how about the thermal pads? Uh, how are they different than a thermal? paste. Uh, well, they're not really that different, it's just that they have a little bit more uh, thickness to it. So they can reach components which are not staying flush with your uh, heat sink. And as you see, you can easily remove it, just like so. Okay. Now, I know you have to be specific in, uh, in thickness. Uh, there are the 0.2 millimeters, 0.5, 1 millimeter, and so far and so forth. You have to locate the one which is appropriate for you, but even if you get one which is slightly thicker than the one that you already have, it will still work because they're flexible. So, you know, think of uh, this as uh, kind of like a memory foam kind of material. When you press on it, it actually uh, varies, its, uh, its thickness will vary. So you can actually, uh, you know, once you tie up the, the screws, uh, it will make uh, contact. Now, uh, never ever, I've seen people which they use uh, the thermal, pa thermal pads and then what goes through their mind? Oh, let me put some thermal paste to make it even more conductive. No, you're gonna kill the component. Uh, that's not gonna make it more conductive, it's gonna make it less conductive, okay? so. Uh, I'm gonna replace the the thermal uh, thermal pads, and you can you can buy it anywhere, uh, eBay, Amazon, uh, and such. See, so this would be a new thermal pad. See, so it looks a little bit more shiny. It has a little bit more oil 
to it. Uh, so that makes it a little bit more conductive. I'm gonna change that because it's pretty boring to see it uh, being cut and we'll, we'll get back to the video after that. Now that all the pads have been uh, replaced, we're gonna go back to reassembling the computer. Uh, now we'll also have to reapply the thermal paste. For thermal paste you can use a variety of uh, thermal paste. Um, I typically use um, uh, the Arctic, Arctic type uh, as uh, they are uh, one of the best. Uh, you can also find uh, a variety of thermal compounds something like this which you find it on eBay I would say stay away from it uh, spend their pretty cheap cheaply made ones they might work for um, uh, for a regular computer which does not generate a lot of heat however you need something of a little bit better quality uh, to do uh, to do this and the way you do it you'll just apply on the graphic uh, card as uh, it has a little bit bigger die than the uh, then the CPU, you put a little bit of a blob, something like this, and then on the CPU, okay, that's about it. Just a little, don't put too much, because more is not necessary better. And the more you have, it's gonna make it thicker, and the heat will not, uh, will not be uh, properly transmitted to the, uh, to the thermal, I'm sorry, to the um, heat sink. Now we're gonna reapply the heat sink. And, okay, so we go like this. Now, before putting the screws, what I recommend, it's actually moving it a little bit with your fingers, so you even that thermal paste. Okay, just like this, that's enough. Now, we're gonna put back the screws. Now you can follow the order. So we're gonna start with uh, screw number one, which is right here on top of the CPU. Okay, screw number two, which is on uh, next to the right fan. Make sure they're nice and tight. Two. Now we can put it for the graphic card. Okay. Now remember, we removed four screws from each of the fans. Okay, so we're gonna start with the little one with a little bit bigger thread, uh, the black ones. So you have one and one. Okay, then we can put the silver ones, which will secure the fan, you will put it into its place. Okay, so one on one side and this guy right here. And we move to the right fan. Put the silver screw. Black screw. Okay, now we have the fans in place. Okay, the heat sink, it's where it's supposed to be. And uh, now we're gonna put back the top case. Okay, the bottom case, I'm sorry. I'm confusing them always because this is the top now, which is actually the bottom of the computer. But anyways, uh, let's, let's just do this. This one, it goes pretty easily. 
Okay, make sure that all the cables are not hidden anywhere. You see, like for example, this the backlight cable. Okay, make sure you bring them all in front, right here. Very, this, that, that, perfect. And these guys. Now, once you make sure, double check all your cables are where they're supposed to be, we can go ahead and push it down. Okay. Is gonna make some popping sounds that means it is in place now we go ahead and uh, put back all the cables we removed so we start again with the left hand side We're gonna rear out this cable just like this we bring it in its place this is the controller cable for the light for the lightning light effects on one side of the computer we're gonna push it in don't push too much on the cable as you don't want to pierce it especially if you're using a metallic tool which I don't recommend but I'm using it because I'm used with it and I'm doing this quite often okay now the keyboard make sure that this one is lifted up okay you see okay so as long as that's loose, we're gonna reinsert the ribbon cable. And you have a little bit of a, of a blue tape right there, which helps you push it down all the way, make sure it's down, then you, we can press on the connector itself. It is secure in place, we, and we repeat the same procedure to all the other ribbon cables, backlight, keyboard backlight, uh, mouse etc etc push down the connector okay and uh, okay battery we put it the last one okay so forget about the battery right now we're gonna put the audio. Okay. There you have it. Then we put the other light, side light. It's called the throne light. Okay. A very futuristic the drone light. Okay. okay, and we're gonna put back the DC adapter. Now remember, we moved, we removed actually this one from the top. That uh, we'll have to put it together. Now you have this real uh, clear piece which will go inside there and then push it down, align the two holes, put the screw through, and that's, that's about it. That's the magic behind the side panel lighting of an Alienware. Pretty simplistic, but for visual effect, repeat the same procedure with the left one. Okay, so pretty much make sure double check that all the cables are properly seated before you decide to, uh, to put it together. So visually inspect it, make sure everything is there. And now we can go ahead and let's see, we missed something, yes, the Wi-Fi card. Let's put the Wi-Fi card back into place. So. The way we do this, we slide it in, okay. We attach the cables first, black would be on the outer side, on the right hand side. Sorry, but it's hard to do this with the camera in front of me, but let's see, okay. Then we do the white one. 
Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure how much you guys are able to see, but it's pretty straightforward. You just have to push the cables down into their place. And now we're gonna add this plastic cover, which keeps everything into place. So. So it goes something like this. It's uh, actually this is the hardest uh, part, the hardest piece to put back together from the whole computer. It goes something like that. We're gonna uh, put back the screw. Let's take the screw. Okay. Come on, be a nice guy and go in. I only have one hand. Okay. That's in, these ones, they don't go anywhere. Cover that. And now we're gonna reapply all the screws. We start with the first three ones on top and around, around the case. I'll be back once that's done. So there is a, to a total of 14 black screws, which uh, goes on the bottom of the, of the computer. Then we're gonna reattach uh, this one. This one simply slides, okay, like this. It locks into place. Then there are two screws. I showed it to you last time, like one here, one there. We're gonna put back those uh, two screws. And that's pretty much, it is, almost fully assembled I'm gonna also uh, just to show you if um, to show you the difference it made I'm gonna run a quick test on the computer itself uh, to see uh, what the temperatures are going to be uh, oh uh, also don't forget about the, the secondary hard drive uh, put it into place just like this Rear out the cable, okay, and then you'll just snap it into place, okay. And there are uh, four screws, four silver screws for the hard drive, okay. So it's gonna be okay. Let me just lift this guy up so I get a little clearance here. And after we put this one, remember to put back your SSD drives. Okay, I don't know how many you had. This particular one only had one SSD. So we're gonna put that guy back in. Okay. Now let's turn this bad boy on and run a quick check of the temperatures see if what we've done made any any difference let's see let's see here okay just give me one second to launch my monitoring software and I'm gonna show you what I'm doing Okay, now I'm gonna show you. Uh, it was idling at around 50 something degrees Celsius all at all the cores. Now here it is a little bit better. I don't know if you can see that. No, probably you can't. Well, the, yeah, you can see that. I'm too close, okay. It's around 39, 40 degrees and that's idling. Now let's just run a quick stress test on it. 
uh, it would before it would jump up to around 90 degrees right away now it stays at around 72 77 core 0 and uh, core 1 are the hottest one uh, at with core 0 at 79 degrees Celsius core 1 65 but it does not move from there so as you see uh, it is actually uh, it kind of helped okay so the temperatures are under a little bit more under control than uh, it was before so that means that uh, we didn't uh, we didn't do all this uh, for nothing and uh, yeah, that's uh, that's how you do it now remember this uh, this computer also has a couple settings uh, it has the performance setting uh, if you're using that then obviously your computer will run uh, will run hotter than it is uh, right now uh, honestly my opinion about overclocking the CPU especially if you're playing video games is not really gonna benefit you that much so I would say let the CPU uh, handle its own uh, uh, core um, uh, um, uh, frequencies and voltages don't don't mess up with that and uh, also what you could do uh, that it has a performance in the BIOS uh, you will uh, find a performance setting which uh, actually allows you to make the fans run always at the maximum speed that will shorten the life of the fan, but it will give you an overall uh, performance, a better performance of the computer, better cooling. So, yeah, with that said, I hope that, um, uh, you know, this video was helpful uh, to you. It solved the problem because um, many, many Alienware, as I was saying in the beginning, they have this, uh, this problem, the overheating problem, so this will kind of solve it. It takes, uh, if you never did it, it will take about an hour of your time and uh, maybe $20 worth of uh, parts. Uh, and uh, again, we'll solve the problem. Thank you for watching. If this video was helpful uh, for you, please uh, like it, um, leave a comment, uh, and uh, subscribe to my channel. More videos uh, to come. Till next time, take care.